Hello and welcome everyone. We're going to be talking about route and resources. Route resources. So we, uh, in the last example, we made some resources. Uh, we made a uh, get to our slash products URL and that mapped to our index action in the products controller. We have a get to product slash new and that is going to map to our products controller, the new action. And then we posted to uh, slash products and that's going to again map to slash products create. Uh, so this is just kind of an, an intro that's um, uh, for our CRUD actions, our create, read, update, and delete. This only covers two of them. So we can read in all of our products with the index, and we can create with the create. But what about the, the update and delete? So in order to do all of that, we're actually going to need seven different, uh, different paths, seven different routes. And... Um, it's th that's a lot of typing. Uh, we're actually going to cover exactly what each of these do and um, and how we can use these. But uh, for now, just that's a lot of characters on screen. That's a lot of typing, uh, and it'd be really easy to accidentally, you know, maybe maybe you hit Z instead of S, and so it's it's products with a Z, and so you get a, a problem and an error with your. Um, with your project, and it'd be nice if instead of having to do this for every single uh, project that we have, um, every single set of, you know, you don't want to do this for users and products and orders, and, you know, uh, then you just have this huge, huge file with all of these items. It'd be nice if we could uh, do this in a little bit of a simpler way. Luckily enough for you, you're using Rails. So Rails has this concept uh, well, first of all, don't do that. Uh, Rails has a concept of resources. So all of those, those seven actions are common actions for CRUD. So any any resource that you want to be able to do um, your CRUD on via uh, HTTP, um, then you can just say resources, products. And this is actually going to, if you put that in your routes.rb, that's going to be exactly the same as typing in all of that except it's much less typing, it's much cleaner, uh, and if you wanted to modify something, you'd only have to modify one line instead of having to modify seven. So, um, in general, you want to use the resources. I mentioned um, talking about each each one of these and what they do, so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Uh, the first one we've already seen, uh, index action. So, in general, our index action is going to be where we are going to output all of our products. It might be um, it in our uh, experiment, in our example, it actually was. We put all of our products. Generally, we would do some sort of a pagination, maybe not show all of them. Uh, in addition to that, maybe it doesn't make sense to show all of the products. If you went to Amazon, there's not just a page that shows all of your products, but they do have a search and they have a search result. So that might be an example of a, an area where you could put a search is in the index action. Um, in in general, if you are going to be rendering a collection of items, so rendering in this case uh, products, we're going to be a collection of products, then we'd want to put that in the index action. Uh, when we want to then um, make a new product, we need a form. We need to actually type in things. And the new product, is, whenever we submit it, is actually going to go to create. So that kind of makes sense. But uh, some people don't understand. It's not 100% intuitive why we need a new action and a create action. It's because you have to show a form before you can create that uh, product. We actually have to enter in a name. We have to enter in the, the price. So uh, it, it's also the same with edit. We edit and update act the same way that new and create act. So before we can actually update an individual product, say maybe we want, we want to change the price from $15 to five, which would be one heck of a sale, uh, we would actually show that product in a form. We would give it its name and its price and allow a user to change those. And when, whenever they, they submit go, it's actually going to go to the update action and change those fields. If we wanted to remove a field, that would still be update. Um, it just, uh, we would remove it in, we, we would just delete, maybe we don't have a, a, a name for an item yet, but we have a price for some reason. We can remove all of the information from the name field and then just leave the price and, and hit update. Okay, uh, so we 
have product show, and this is going to be different from products index. This is where you want to show one detailed version of a of a product. Um, this might you can I guess kind of think of this in terms of Amazon. Whenever you're searching, you get a big list of products that would be maybe like index. And then whenever you actually click on one, then you're seeing a detailed view. You you get much, much more information and you can do other things, maybe say like like order. Um, or another example might be on, you know, on Twitter. If you go to uh, twitter.com slash schneems, you are viewing one individual user. So uh, it's going to be all about that user. Uh, also notice that all of those are Git requests. So none of, none of these modify our server. Um, even though edit and new have forms on them, they don't actually do any editing and they don't create a new product until we get to our uh, create, which is going to be via post, or our update, which is going to be via put. So moving on, we've got, again, create via post. Uh, we talked about this in extensively in the last class. Um, and with our CRUD operations, create and read, uh, you should just remember that get corresponds to read, create corresponds to post. And after that, I can typically, it makes sense that delete and destroy map to one another. Um, and then via process of elimination, I can remember that put corresponds to update. Uh, if I don't remember that offhand or I don't want to go through all those, I put has a U in it and update also starts with a U. So uh, create is how we create our, our products. Um, destroy is going to be how we would destroy an entire product. So if you wanted to destroy a product with an ID of three, then we could uh, send a delete query with uh, products and an ID of three. Notice there's no corresponding form for this because we don't need to, if we're going to delete the entire product, we don't need a form. Uh, we can put that link, we can put a link or a, a button to delete a product anywhere. Uh, finally, we have update. Uh, we talked about update being paired with, with edit, and we will see an example of that as you work through the exercises today. So hopefully that, that clears things up a little bit. And this is all convention. You can have additional custom named routes, uh, but in general, I shy away from them. Um, it, might, it might seem easier to name uh, create as, you know, make a product and destroy as, um, you know, delete it, yo, or uh, uh, whatever. But at the end of the day, um, if someone new comes into your team, they're not going to know what those are. They're going to be looking for create. They're going to be looking for destroy. They're going to be looking for update. Um, and even if you're not going to have someone new to your project, if you quit looking at your code for like a month and then you come back, it's going to take brain power and, and energy to know um, where to go. So in in general, I try to restrict myself to these uh, seven different actions, the index, new, edit, show, create, destroy, and update, which also happen to be the seven actions you get whenever you run scaffolding. So if you forget what they are, you can just run scaffolding or take a look at a controller that was generated by a scaffolding. You will definitely run into custom controllers, uh, custom controller actions in the wild. And that is, I don't know, it's just one of a big pet peeve of mine. I don't I don't like it. Uh, sure, you can do it, um, but in general, if you if you actually understand and and try to even just spend a little bit of time asking yourself, okay, you know what what is actually going on in this page? Uh, you know, are we? Oh, it looks like we are focusing just on one item. So, okay, this probably belongs in a show. Um, okay, or or what's going on here? It looks like we're we're looking at a collection of items. So, it probably belongs in an index. Uh, we can also make. Um, controllers that aren't associated directly with uh, with resources, and, and we will be doing that later on in the class. Uh, so, in general, just if if possible, try to stick to those seven commands, and all will be uh, all will be gravy. And also try to uh, follow along with the conventions. Uh, these are just conventions. You could have. Uh, you could swap the code in create and destroy, but that wouldn't make very much sense. Uh, it would just be really confusing. So if you just follow along with the conventions, life is going to be much easier. Uh, also, to reiterate, uh, you want to use resource resources in routes, and uh, that is whenever you do that, it's going to automatically build all of those seven, seven different actions for you. It's going to keep things a lot cleaner. 
Uh, we can do the custom routes like we saw before where we were individually saying git post um, and then specifying a, a URL and then, you know, doing our hash rocket mapping that directly to a, um, a controller and an action. But uh, if you do that for all of your routes, your routes file is going to be huge. Uh, and if you change anything, it's going to be really, really, really difficult to make sure that you got all of those things changed across the board. It's going to be hard to read. It's going to be hard to up, upkeep um, in general. Use resources whenever possible. Okay, so that, that covers our section on using our routes resources. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is our Rails URL helpers, which are, are going to be pretty crucial in this uh, next exercise. So go ahead and move on to the next video.